So, we cannot prove ourselves. It's not about proving that I am a child of God or proving my Christian life. We talked about this morning, it's about how God has proven Himself to us and how we prove Him to us. It's not about us proving anything. The mentality that says, I can't do anything anyway, I'm totally lost, therefore I'm going to quit, is one aspect of that proving mentality. The other one is, okay, just tell me all the things I need to do, I'll check all the boxes and I'll say, see, here's what I am. That's the other of the two ends of that proving mentality. So, if we can't prove ourselves, it's not about proving, then how is it and what does God expect us to do? What's it about? I think there's a third point from this morning. God proved Himself to us. We prove God to ourselves. But here's what God expects us to do, and this is what I think uh, these following scriptures are about. He wants us to prove ourselves to ourselves. Acts 2, verse 40. After Peter finished that great sermon, it says, And with many other words he spoke to them, Save yourselves from this perverse generation. Save yourselves. Paul would later come along in Philippians 2 and verse 12, and he would say, Your salvation is in you. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. For you do not know that Christ is in you unless you become disqualified. Examine yourselves. That word examine, prove yourselves. What? I'm not supposed to prove myself. Aha. Uh-huh. Prove yourselves. Galatians 6 and verse 4, examine yourselves whether you're in the faith, then you'll have rejoicing in yourself alone and not in another. Prove, same word. And the same word again occurs in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, where he talked about the genuineness of your faith. The word prove in Scripture, prove yourself, prove or examine your faith, those words the genuineness of your faith, that word we have translated as prove is also examine. It is the word in Greek pronounced dokimazo, document. That's what it means, document. Sort of sounds like what Peter would say If anyone asks you for the hope that is in you, be ready to give an answer. Document. So, what is he telling us? We're talking about root to fruit. Whatever is in the root will come out in the fruit. And if we understand the grace of God, then it's not about having to check all the boxes and get everything right. It's not about, I can't do it, therefore I'm going to quit and just let God do it. It's not about either one of those extremes. What is it about? It's about the grace of God. I don't have to prove myself. It's not about that, but it is about me proving myself to me. Notice those verses. Work out your salvation. Examine yourself to know that you are in Christ unless you have become disqualified. Examine your faith, the genuineness of your faith. What he is saying to us is this. In the Christian life, we are tasked with saying to self, 
I am in Christ. And I am living in a, in a way that is faithful to him. Now, the problem is we get a little nervous. We get nervous when we say, I am on the way to heaven. Because we don't ever want to give off the idea that I'm doing everything right and I'm living a perfect life and therefore because of my perfection I'm going to heaven. We don't want to do that. And yet, that's what Peter said, wasn't it? Be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. Remember what the word hope is in Scripture? Desire plus expectation. If you desire to go to heaven and you have hope, then it's because you also expect to be in heaven. Therefore, proving me to me. So, I think part of the problem is, oh, this word works. So, for a few minutes, think with me about this word in Scripture. Because the whole problem with this proving self, I can't do enough works, or I want to do all the works and then be able to know that I'm there by checking all the boxes. What does the word work? Well, I look first of all at the word as it relates to us as humans, because that's how we use the word. We use the word work. Um, Webster's Dictionary defines it something like this. It is mental or physical effort that is done to achieve a purpose or a goal. That's what we mean by work. Spiritual, I mean mental or physical activity or effort to achieve a goal. That's the word work. Now, spiritually speaking, what does that mean? Let's examine the point. Number one, work is, in that definition, it is effort and activity. So, it is work. The Pharisees jumped all over Jesus and his disciples one time because he said they were working on the Sabbath. Now, do you remember what they were doing? They were walking through the fields. They pulled some grain off, and they rubbed it in their hands to get the grain and not the chaff. Let's put it in something that you and I can understand. You go to Texas Roadhouse. Isn't that the one that has the peanuts? Is that right? Logan's? I don't know which one it is. Okay. You go in there. You get some peanuts. And you squeeze it and pop the shells off and eat the peanuts. Uh, unless you just eat the whole thing. I don't know. I don't eat the whole thing. Now, I'm going to make Jack sick for just a minute. I love boiled peanuts. I've been with Jack eating boiled peanuts, made him sick. I love boiled peanuts. They're really, really good. I don't even eat the shells then either. I like sucking on those shells, but you got to take the shell off and eat what's inside. So, in our definition of the word work, work is taking the peanut out of the shell. Well, now, in the definition that we understand work to be, effort or activity, is that work? Yes. Is it an activity? Yes, you took the shell off. Was there effort? Yes, therefore it's work. That's what the Pharisees were saying when they were taking the chaff, a husk, off of the grain. So activity is involved. But it's also to achieve a goal or a purpose. Everyone here would say, I want to go to heaven, everybody here. Why are we living the lives we live? Is it because it's easier to live in this world as a Christian? Uh, no. Is it because somebody's paying you a lot of money to be a Christian? No, thank you. That's, that's, that's keyed in right over there, man. All right? Why is it that you are a Christian? 
because you want to go to heaven. Amen. That's not selfish. That's, that's not a bad thing. You want to go to heaven. Therefore, there is a goal, right? There is a purpose. So, in fact, Christianity is effort leading to a goal. That's a fact. And therefore, everybody gets all messed up over the concept of work. I want to help us make sure we understand how God deals with the word work so that we can understand what he means when he says document, examine, prove yourselves. Four quick passages. Turn with me to Romans chapter 11. Once again, I'd like to hear some pages. I would remind you that you technology people, if you have a way of putting a sound into the electronic page turning so that they could have their tech, their, their tablets open every time they go, whoosh, see, it sounds like a page turning. Whoosh, whoosh. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, we'd all know. All right. Romans 11. Start verse 1. I say then, as God cast away his people, certainly not. For I also am an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the Scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord, they've killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Now notice this verse. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. Now, admittedly, if you are some versions that you are reading, uh, America Standard, NIV, and some others, the second part of that verse is not there. Because there is some discussion as to whether or not the writer added that phrase, but if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. There is discussion that says that shouldn't be there. Some say yes it does, and some say no it shouldn't. And the point being still there. Notice what he's saying. God, by grace, is offering people, he's talking about these, the remnant who, of Israel, that he is offering grace to. It is of grace not of works, then grace wouldn't be grace. Because grace says there are no works. It's a free gift. So, it's of grace without works or it won't be grace. But notice the second part of the verse. If it is of works, then it can't be of grace. Because then work wouldn't be work. He is saying in this verse that in some way, there is a dichotomy. There's your big word. A dichotomy between grace and works. This is where people get confused. This is why we have a problem. Because didn't the passage say, work out your own salvation? Yes, it did. Well, then, if there are no works in grace, hmm, we have a problem. I think the problem might lie in the definition of works. Go to the second passage, Ephesians chapter 2. Passage you know quite well. I want to look at it just a little differently, not maybe for you, but for me. Verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Notice the structure of the verse, or the structure of the concept. Here's what he's saying. Grace through faith equals Salvation. That's what it says. Grace through faith equals salvation. That's what he's saying. 
But he's also saying, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Hmm. So, in this passage, Paul is describing a moment or a situation. Because I think part of the discussion here to understand this and the next verse is the placement of the word salvation. Now go to James chapter 2. We're getting all these passages in front of us. James chapter 2, passage you know well. Just look at a few of these verses. Verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if anyone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Someone would say, You have faith and I have works. In a humorous way, James says, Ah, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Here's what James is saying. You got faith? Great. Show it to me, but don't do anything. Come on, show me your faith, but don't do anything. This idea of effort or activity. In other words, the teaching that says that salvation does not involve works is misunderstood to say salvation does not involve activity or effort. Because that's the definition we use for the word works. But that's not the definition God uses. Important in this passage of James 2 is again the word salvation where it is placed. In this passage, here's how James is talking. Salvation implies working faith. But now, people have said that James and Paul contradict each other. Because Paul is saying it's grace. James is saying it's works. That's not what they're doing at all. In fact, Paul summarized James very well. You go back to Ephesians 2. We are saved by grace. Here it is. Grace through faith. We're saved. Now comes James's text. Succinctly summarized in verse 10 of Ephesians 2. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that God before ordained that we should walk in them. James and Paul agree. Paul begins talking about before we were saved, the grace through faith leads to salvation. James picks up at the salvation point and says, as a saved person, it implies working faith. But Paul closes his argument with working faith. We're his workmanship. Who? Who is or who fits the category of the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus for good works? People who have been saved by grace through faith. Those are the people it is implied that they will, in fact, have working faith. Now, how do we put all this together? This proving ourselves, this, this false teaching connected to proving ourselves. The false teaching that says, I can't do anything right anyway. I'm all messed up. I'm going to do nothing and let God do it all. Or the other side that says, I'm going to do everything as best I can, check all the boxes, and then I'm going to claim, hey, I know I'm right. As though we're boasting like the Pharisees. How do we put it all together? I think it lies in nature. What was the text that Mike just read, John 15? Go back there, if you will. John 15 
and notice a couple of things. The whole point of the text is something very easily understood. If you are a branch on the vine, you will bear fruit. There will be effort. There will be activity. In fact, if that branch isn't doing anything, what do you do? Cut it off. So it's not about the branch saying, look what I did. Look how great, man, I have made the greatest grapes that have ever been made. And I did it myself. Me. The, vine, the, the branch can't say that. And the branch that sits down and does absolutely nothing, cut it off. So what is God saying about work? God is simply saying, it is the nature of man in a relationship with God to be active. That's what it's saying. And guess what? It began in the garden. The very first thing we're told about the relationship between Adam, Eve, and God. He said, tend and keep the garden. You know why? Because it is the nature of a relationship with God to be active and to have effort. And that's what he's talking about. But when he says, not of works, he's saying, not of works whereby because of your effort and because of your activity, you can think, look how good I am. Certainly effort, certainly activity, but with the humility that recognizes that I am still at the mercy of God. Amen. It's all in His grace. Through His grace, I don't have to prove myself. Through His grace, it's not about that. It's about, yes, proving me to me. Making sure that I am doing what I know and should be doing. It's about me being faithful to the Lord. It's not about me standing up next to someone and that person saying and judging me to be in or out of the Lord. It's not about that. It's not about me trying to boast and prove and check all the boxes so God will judge me well. It's simply my nature. If I'm a Christian, it is just my nature to be active, to put forth effort, it is nature that answers the problem that everyone has created, it seems, in the religious world over this concept of work. There is no conflict between Paul or James or anybody else. Neither of them is teaching that there are no works involved. Neither of them is teaching that grace only saves anybody. Because, in fact, grace must be received through faith in order to find that salvation that God promises. But then in that new nature, that new existence, working faith is the nature. Therefore, it makes no sense to think about a Christian who is not active. It makes no sense. Now, definitionally, I understand a child of God becomes such when he or she is immersed into Christ. That's fact. But to think of a faithful Christian who is not active with the Lord doesn't make any sense. It's a nonsensical term because, indeed, he wants us to work. He wants us to be active. Therefore, think about our nature and think about proving to self that you are where you should be 
as you examine Scripture and compare the fruit of your life to the things we find there. Give some thought to that. Give me some thoughts about that as we continue to develop root to fruit. Tonight, if you're not in Christ, if you've not identified yourself into that relationship, then you are without a Savior in your life. Tonight, if you're ready to be a child of God, if you're ready to be faithful in a way that you have not, if you need our prayers for some other reason, uh, will you come as our shepherds join us at the front as we stand and sing together?